This is I Hear Things for Friday, November 26, 2021, the last best frontier for podcasting. Well, it's Thanksgiving here in the United States, which is exactly like Canadian Thanksgiving, except it's much less polite. I've actually never been down with the whole big turkey dinner thing. I eat enough turkey throughout the year, so the traditional American Thanksgiving dinner, it's a little beige for my tastes. So this year, we're having lobster pot pies from the Kennebunk Inn in Maine. These are the foods of my people. Incidentally, here in downtown Boston, where we live, wild turkeys roam the streets of the financial district, and that's a particularly brazen activity for them in November. I've always assumed they're just keeping a close eye on their retirement plans, but I've cautioned many of them against cryptocurrency. I don't think their time horizons are conducive to that kind of speculation. We also, this week, adopted a retired racing greyhound from Ireland, and by all accounts, he is a very good boy. It seems that the racing dogs are used to having music on in their kennels 24 hours a day, so we've been streaming uh, all kinds of Irish radio stations, Dublin 98, uh, Live 95, which is Limerick's best music mix since he's from Limerick. We've been doing this uh, all through the, all throughout the day and the night just to get him more acclimated to American soil. And it's actually been a nice refresher course on how great radio around the world sounds with more listener-friendly commercial loads than many American stations carry. In fact, uh, my company, Edison Research, recently completed a 6,000-person study in six different countries that looked at the perceptions of car buyers about their in-car entertainment. And it might surprise many of you to learn that broadcast radio was still the dominant choice, not just the default, but the choice from people, even with other options. And look, it's free, it's easy to use, it always works, and more importantly, it provides surprise and delight. Now, here in the United States, satellite radio has carved some of broadcast radio's share of ear away, but both forms of audio are linear programmed experiences. And by the way, if you're, let's say, 30 plus, an interesting experiment would be, would be to see how the playlists of your favorite local radio station differ year over year, and then compare that with how much your personal Spotify wrapped playlist, if you've seen that at the end of the year, how much that differs this year from what you listened to most last year. Now, I'm not making a value judgment here, by the way. I'm saying that there is a place for both in the vibrant world of audio. I think about these things because the great Rosalie Trombley passed this week. Rosalie was the legendary music director of CKLW, which was an AM rock station in Windsor, Ontario. And she was as big a tastemaker as the music radio business has ever had. Today, artists will surface on YouTube or TikTok in addition to radio and streaming. But back in the 70s, Rosalie was the queen of breaking new music, new songs, new artists. She broke Benny and the Jets as a single for crying out loud. Listen to Benny and the Jets sometime with fresh ears and ask yourself, does that sound like a pop single to you? Well, it was to her, along with the music of so many other Canadian and American artists who owe their breakthrough to Rosalie. My friend Sean Ross knows more about Rosalie's legacy than anyone alive, and he says it better than I ever could in an article that I will link to in the show notes. Now, I wasn't able to listen to CKLW in the 70s and 80s. Those were the dark times before Fang or Mang or whatever tech overlords we have now. But her influence reached me nonetheless. I, I grew up on the very northeastern tip of the United States, at the weirdly busy border crossing between Callis, Maine, and St. Stephen, New Brunswick. And I say weirdly busy because on a typical summer day, more people would cross that border than actually lived in Callis, Maine. As a result, I grew up with as much, if not more, Canadian radio and TV than I did American. Canada maintains what's called a CanCon rule, which stipulates that a certain percentage of the programming, including music, be Canadian in origin. So while the rest of the United States got some exposure to Canadian artists, Brian Adams, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, I was also getting force-fed Triumph and Paolas and The Spoons and Honeymoon Suite and April Wine and altogether too much Anne Murray. And don't get me started on the TV. The Beachcombers still traumatizes me. All of those Canadian pop and rock radio programmers working at the stations that I listened to growing up 
were looking to Rosalie. Now, I pay tribute to her in this podcast, not because I lament the good old days of the tastemaker DJ, or to wax poetically about the greatness of radio days past. Now, I do so out of impatience. Now, on the show, I have mentioned several times that the music industry needs to figure podcasting out. And this is why I think the next Rosalie is out there. I think the next thousand Rosalies are out there. I think they're going to emerge as podcasters. Because why wouldn't we want to hear a great curated music show on demand? It's just so obvious that this is the thing that has to happen. Despite spoken word audio growing its share by 40% in the last seven years, we still listen to mostly music, and that's not going to change. But we continue to wait for the podcasting world and the recording industry to collide in a way that makes licensed music easy and economically feasible for all podcasters in an open system. A friend of mine who lived in San Francisco used to send me cassette tapes of a radio station there called KFOG, and they had a show called 10 at 10, which was 10 great songs from one great year, typically. Uh, And it featured a, a fantastic DJ named Dave Morey, who would take you through those 10 great songs from one great year, Uh, interspersed with wry commentary, voiceovers from Don Pardo, who uh, was the voiceover host for SNL for so many years, and a lot of other kind of fun production elements from whatever year they were looking at. I could not get enough of these cassette tapes. Now today, KFOG has been replaced with the simulcast of KNBR, which uh, was a formerly AM-only sports talk station. Could San Francisco support another Dave Morey today, I don't know. But could California? Could America? Could the world? Well, I think so. On-demand music shows will make that happen. Now, I don't want to go back to the days of Rosalie Trombley or Dave Morey or Alan Freed or Wolfman Jack. I want to go forward. I want to go forward to hear your show on demand in all its wacky and wonderful weirdness. And I'm impatient for that to happen already. It can sort of happen on Anchor for Spotify premium subscribers. I had a fling with it myself on a very short-lived show I called Deep Six, but it just wasn't good enough for me. At least my show wasn't good enough for me. But I want it to happen everywhere. I want you to surprise and delight me, and I can't wait. On-demand music shows are the last best frontier for podcasting, and when this happens, everything in audio will change. Next, I've got a quick, uh, interesting data point from the recent release of our third quarter podcast consumer tracker, which we put out this data for subscribers. But I want to share this one single point with you. If you've listened to this podcast at all over the past six months, you know I've been talking a lot about Facebook as a potential outlet to attract listeners who are new to podcasting, but not necessarily with your current podcast. Now, I don't make this stuff up. In our Q2 data for the unique quarter, not the rolling four-quarter average that we generally report, but just for for Q2, when we ask people what platforms they ever use to listen to podcasts, 8% said Facebook. And again, this is ever listen, not listen to most. So people can name multiple services for this question. So don't misinterpret this as my saying that 8% of podcasts are heard on Facebook or something. No, 8% of weekly podcast consumers said in the second quarter that they ever listen to podcasts through Facebook. This quarter, that 8% has grown to 20%. Now, it's still much lower than Spotify or Apple or YouTube for that same question. But clearly, there's a there there. Uh, Just a quick note, I was sitting in on the live recording session of Dave Jackson and Jim Collison's Ask the Podcast Coach last week. Uh, And someone in the chat, this was on YouTube, asked for my podcast's production process, and I I joked about not having one. But in reality, I've done a lot of trial and error to get the sound of the podcast exactly how I want it. Now, I feel like I've done the whole audio chain thing before, so I'm not going to duplicate that. But I will just say this. There's no free lunch in making a good podcast. You pay the piper somewhere in the process. I'm a fast and pretty good writer, but I'm a slow and bad editor, so I script everything. I read it aloud, try to fix what's awkward, and then I record it. I edit almost nothing. The show is published about 15 minutes after I hit record because I've done the work 
before I hit record. I haven't mastered my craft, but this is how I'm trying. In a couple of weeks, my wife, Tamson Webster, and I are going to present what I hope is a real treat for subscribers to my newsletter. And if you're not a subscriber to my newsletter at tomwebster.media, you will need to do that in order to get the benefit of this. We're going to be presenting a webinar together that we're calling The Pitchable Podcast. Now, like you maybe, I get a lot of bad pitches for podcasts, to listen to them, to advertise on them, guest pitches, etc., And I'm sure that a PR professional could rewrite these to be more compelling, although I will say some of these are written by PR professionals. But the real problem here is not that the podcast pitch is bad. The real problem is that they don't have a pitchable podcast. Now, that's not to say that the podcast is bad. It's just missing an element or two that would truly distinguish it and make it compelling. Now, I've enlisted my wife Tamson in this because she's a genius at doing this. She works with writers, speakers, thinkers, uh, and companies to make their messages irresistible. She even turns academics into rock stars. Seven of the TEDx Cambridge speakers that she has worked with, largely scientists, have had their talks promoted to the main TED.com site where they've racked up millions of views. She's pretty good at this. We're going to be presenting a framework for podcasters based on her Red Thread methodology that we call the Pitchable Podcast And I guarantee it'll make you think. It'll make you work, might make you sad, might make you frustrated. It will make you better. So we're going to walk subscribers through this in a free webinar on December 9th. But only subscribers to my newsletter will be able to attend. So if you're reading uh, my article on the web or listening to the podcast, you'll want to subscribe at tomwebster.media to get the full details next week. And finally... A couple of quick things to look forward to. We will finally be presenting the Infinite Dial UK next week, which will be the first true apples to apple comparison of the US and UK podcasting markets. I'll put a link in the show notes. And we also just recently published the third quarter update of our top 50 podcast ranker, which is the only all inclusive list of the top podcasts in America. As I said in the article that accompanies it, and again, I'll link to that, I continue to be encouraged by the number of independent shows on that list. Now, many of those shows, sure, they're now being acquired or have recently been acquired or at least represented by the larger networks, but there's still a lot of truly independent shows. The audience finds them first. And what this means, dear listener, is that the I Hear Things podcast, this very podcast, does indeed stand a chance of dethroning Joe Rogan, particularly if I stay away from medical advice, which is a thing that I continue to pledge. This has been I Hear Things for Friday, November 26th, 2021. I'm Tom Webster, and I'll see you next week.